Water. Earth. Another recap. You will learn respect, and suffering will be your teacher. Oh, it's interesting seeing that again, because Zuko made that speech about how he learned from suffering, but I forgot that Ozai had said the same thing. Zuko alone. Oh, is that his mother? Could I get some water, a bag of feed, and something hot to eat? I can get you two bags of feed. Ow! You throw an eggs at us, stranger? No. You see who did throw it? No. That's your favorite word? No. No. Those soldiers are supposed to protect us from the Fire Nation, but they're just a bunch of thugs. Mm. I think this show does such a good job not depicting one side as good and one side as evil. Instead, there are good and evil people among all the nations. That sounds obvious to say out loud, but I really feel like not enough shows do that. And also, I think in real life, we don't hold that view as often as we should. We tend to think of whole groups of people as one solid entity and we attribute one way of thinking and one goal and one value system to that entire group, which if you really examine it under any level of scrutiny, it kind of falls apart because any group is made up of individuals. And among that group of individuals, some people are gonna be motivated by goodness. Other people are gonna be motivated by power or their own selfish ambitions. And different people are gonna want different things. And even worse, what I see people doing a lot is they take an entire group and they boil it down into the lowest common denominator of that group and then say that the whole group is like that. It's just a lazy way to attack the other side. It's so tempting to boil large groups of people into single forms because it's so much easier to think about than the truth, which is that the individual level is where things really happen. I'll take you to my house and feed your ostrich horse for you. <laughs> No one can ever sneak up on us. So obviously all the animals in this show are a hybrid of two different animals, but I didn't know you could use the same animal more than once. That was a pig sheep and a pig cow, but I guess you can. And a pig rooster. He doesn't have to say who he is if he doesn't want to, Sila. That was a very insightful thing for that guy to say. Supper's going to be ready soon. Would you like to stay? I should be moving on. Why don't you two work for a while and then we'll eat. And that was very insightful of that woman, knowing that Zuko is not accepting food because he's too proud. And so by getting him to work, he feels better about accepting their their aid smart family a man's past is his business this is great for zuko spending time with these people helping him out hey mom want to see how azula feeds turtle ducks oh this is a flashback oh what the hell why would you do that oh i got scared for a second why'd you do that that's what moms are like if you mess with their babies how they're gonna fight you back. So his mother is super nurturing and kind. You can tell that she really loves her son. And it immediately explains Zuko because he's a combination of his father's austerity and violence and his mother's kindness and caring. They're two conflicting forces that are playing out inside of him. I just had this thought that when we think about what we get from our parents, we often think about DNA. DNA shapes our physical traits and also gives us the potential for certain personality types. But in a way, the actions that we observe in our parents are a different kind of inheritance that shape us. And in some ways, maybe it's more important because what we get from our parents we then act out, and that shapes the world even with people we have no genetic relation to. In a way, our parents' actions and then our actions and then the actions of those people that we interact with are their own sort of code that influences the way events unfold. Action towards others, in that sense, is kind of like a different version of DNA. Anyway, it's interesting to see that his mother is so kind. Oh, it's the, it's the girls. That's May. I forget the other one's name. Yes, darling. I think it's a good idea to play with your sister. She was manipulated from the beginning. Ba Sing Se must be something to behold. I hope you all may see it someday. It's strange seeing Uncle Iroh as a military commander. I knew he was in the war, but it's different actually seeing it. For Zuko, a pearl dagger from the general who surrendered when we broke through the outer wall. Never give up without a fight. For Azula. She wears the latest fashion for Earth yeah. Kingdom girls. <laughs> a cute little dolly. If uncle doesn't make it back from war, then dad would be next in line to be Fire Lord. Azula, we don't speak that way. Oh, so Iroh is in line for the throne. For some reason, I had never considered that. Because he seems so content with where he is, it adds something 
knew to think that he actually lost the chance at the throne. So does that mean that Zuko's dad forced him out? It would be awful if Uncle Iroh didn't return. And besides, Fire Lord Azulon is a picture of health. And the grandfather is alive, Azulon. I still think our dad would make a much better Fire Lord than his royal tea-loving kookiness. So she just started off kind of bad. I may have been wrong about her. You're holding them all wrong. Don't think of them as separate, because they're not. They're just two different parts of the same whole. <laughs> He's a fast learner. Your son's battalion got captured. Iroh has lost his son. Oh, yeah. Your cousin, Luten, did not survive the battle. What's gonna happen to my brother? Mm, that's a really nice parallel. Will you stay? I need to move on. I want you to have this. Never give up without a fight. Uncle's coming home. Uncle's a quitter and a loser. He found out his son died and he just fell apart. I'm guessing that Uncle Iroh losing his son made him take stock in what really mattered to him. Your father has requested an audience with Fire Lord Azulon. Can't you just call him Grandfather? He's not exactly the powerful Fire Lord he used to be. Someone will probably end up taking his place soon. Not another word. What is wrong with that child? Yeah, you really gotta wonder, like, how did she turn out that way? It seems like her mother had absolutely no impact on her whatsoever. How was it great-grandfather Sozin managed to win the Battle of Han Tui? Because... Because even though his army was outnumbered, he cleverly calculated his advantages. No, no. Would you show grandfather the new moves you demonstrated to me? Mm. So she's a prodigy. She's a true prodigy. Oh yeah, I said that. Just like her grandfather. I'd like to demonstrate what I've been learning. Oh, he spoke at a turn. That's what his father burns him for later. Oh no, he's not good. Yikes. That's who you are, Zuko. Someone who keeps fighting even though it's hard. Tell me what you want. Iroh's bloodline has ended. But I am here, father. And my children are alive. Revoke Iroh's birthright. Whoa. You dare suggest I betray Iroh? Your punishment has scarcely begun. I love that for a couple reasons. One, it shows just how scheming Ozai is. And you see it runs in the family, just like Azula. Second, I love how there's flames all around Azulon. He's so powerful, he's just surrounded by fire. Their faces say a lot. Zuko looks surprised or worried. Azula looks ready for blood. Dad's going to kill you. Nice try. Grandfather said Dad's punishment should fit his crime. You must know the pain of losing a firstborn son by sacrificing your own. Liar! That's horrible. Dad would never do that to me. Your father would never do what to you? I'm guessing that Ozai kills Azula and claims the throne that way. Watching this, I'm kind of struggling with Azula a little bit. I see that this coldness runs in the family, but why didn't the mother have an influence on her? There are two things I can think of. One is very real, but very unsatisfying, and that's that Azula was just born that way. It's possible that people are just born with their personalities or certain predispositions for their personalities that they, they grow into, if unchecked. The other theory, which I think is a little more appealing because it allows for redemption, is that the reason Azula ended up being so evil is because she's better at playing Ozai's game than Zuko is. I think that in this dynamic, they're in a kingdom and Ozai is the son of the emperor. So it's easy to believe in that world that the most desirable thing, the most respectable figure are those leaders. And so you're going to prioritize and value being like them. And if you're good at it, you're going to be rewarded for it. And if you're bad at it, you're going to be cast aside. It may be that Azula was so good at firebending and so good at being daddy's little girl that she was absorbed into Ozai's evil, whereas Zuko he may have struggled with it, and so he was kind of caught in the hands of his mother. More evidence for that is the fact that Zuko still wants to be like his father. He still values that as the highest good. Lee pulled a knife on them. I know we barely know you, but I'll get your son back. Good man. It doesn't matter who I am, but I know who you are. I really like the setting of this episode. It reminds me both of old Kurosawa movies like Yojimbo, where the samurai has to save the town from a bunch of thugs, and also westerns, which are closely linked in film to the samurai movies. You're not soldiers. You're bullies. You're sick cowards messing with a family who's already lost one son to the war. There's some connection, I feel, between what he's saying now and his father. His father is kind of the bully, picking on Iroh, who had just lost a son. I don't know if that's intentional, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but just a thought. Nice. I love this theme. I guess this is like Zuko's fighting theme. 
Another interesting thing is that Zuko has been shown to prefer blades. That's like his actual calling in fighting is swordsmanship. Forget who you are. What does she do? Huh. So he used fire for the first time after she told him not to forget who he was. Yeah. My name is Zuko, son of Ursa and Fire Lord Ozai, prince of the Fire Nation and heir to the throne. You're not a prince, you're an outcast. Oh no. Father burned and disowned him. Even the Earth Nation. You should have it. No, I hate you. Although that's very sad to see, I feel like that's a very real reaction. It's hard to suddenly reverse so much built up hatred and anger towards a certain group of people. It's very difficult to think of people at the individual level and look at their individual actions as opposed to the group they identify with, especially when you have so much at stake. Where's mom? No one knows. Oh, and last night, grandpa passed away. Not funny, Azula. You're sick. And I want my knife back. Who's going to make me? Mom? Wow, she has no love for her mother at all. Where is but what she? happened? So what happened to his mother? What's the connection between his mother disappearing and Azulan dying? She came into his room to say everything she did was to protect him. Did she kill Azulan? Holy sh! You were father of Iron, father of Oza, grandfather of Zuko and Azula. As was your dying wish, you are now succeeded by your second son. So I'm guessing Zuko's mother killed Azulan, and then Ozai used that opportunity to kill her and take the throne. Oh my god, that is so gut-wrenching. Because now he's all alone. She was the only thing keeping him together. I knew Zuko had a tragic past, but I had no idea the extent of it. As tragic as his mother dying is, that's kind of the least of it. The worst part is that he now has to live in that world alone. It's amazing he has any decency at all left in him after that. And no wonder Uncle Iroh feels so strongly about him. The two of them are the only people in that whole family that have any decency. And Zuko's lost a mother and Iroh's lost a son. Wow, it's tragic. That was amazing. That episode is packed with symbolism. I feel like it'll take a while for me to unpack. Zuko gave him the knife, never give up. And his mother also told him, never give up on who you are. It seems like the caring people in his life are trying to remember to be who he wants to be and not be dictated by all their forces that want to use him for their own gain. I also find it interesting that he had the flashback with his mother and she told him to remember who he is at all times. And that's when he started using fire. I wonder if in some way that isn't some closure for him that he can't deny different aspects of who he is and where he's come from. On that note, I'd just like to jump in here and say that I I realized later that the two swords being two halves of the same whole is a metaphor for himself. There are two parts to Zuko, but they're both part of the whole. And I think that's one of the realizations that he maybe has in this episode. While I'm doing this, I should also throw in the fact that his mother's death is foreshadowed by the duck in the beginning. She says that if anything harms her baby to watch out, and that's exactly what happens in the episode. So pretty, some pretty great writing. There's something very existentially terrifying in this episode. Well, there are many things that are terrifying in this episode, but one thing I keep thinking about is the Azula thing and how she became who she is. We want to believe that we have the power to change who we are in our lives and be what we want to be, but I sometimes worry that there's a certain line that you have to be able to pass before you can ever reach any kind of potential at all. It's a question of how much does luck determine who we are and our identities and our fates? And I think that there are certain essentials that you have to be born with in order to improve, which is a scary thought, but it might be true. Luckily, I think that the bar might actually be low. Maybe the thing that you actually need in order to be able to climb out of the state you're born in is just the knowledge that things can change. The belief that actually things can get better, that you can be who you want to be. I think once you have gotten that message and internalized that, only at that point can you actually begin to change your station and to do better than your, your raw state, rather than being victims of our birth and victims of fate, like it seems Azula is. Although again, Azula has no need to even think about that because in her world, what she's doing is a very successful iteration of a human being. And that's where the luck comes in for her is that she was just born into that. It's kind of a grim reality of life that there are so many things just outside of our control. In a way, I feel like Azula is a victim. Yes, she's evil, but 
She's kind of a victim of circumstance. Zuko is also a victim of circumstance, but the key difference I think he's had with Azula is he's had moments that have opened his eyes to the world and to what other possibilities there are. And it's often the case that growth is painful. It's a lot easier to stay where you are in your own little bubble, in your own world. It's terrifying to step out into a new world of feeling and thought and emotion. And Zuko didn't choose it, he was forced into it. But as a result, he ends up being someone that has more potential, I feel. And I think that's a pretty good parallel for life. The whole thing feels so real, and I think that's why it's so great. As much as I enjoy this, I kind of hope the next episode is a little more lighthearted. I hope we get a little breather. Either way, I'll see you for the next one.